In this video, we're going to look at a basic introduction to stem and leaf diagrams. We've got a histogram here, and it's the height in centimetres of a number of plants. So we've got from 0 to 100, and a frequency from 0 to 50. We can see from the histogram that the modal class is 60 to 80 centimetres. We can see around 40 plants were between 60 and 80 centimetres. From the histogram, we can get a general shape of the distribution. We can say the vast majority of the plants were 40 centimetres or more. We can say that very few of the plants were 20 centimetres or less. That looks to be around 4. The only problem we have here with the histogram is that we don't know the individual value of each of the plants. So for example, in my modal class, I might have had 62.3, I might have had 71.9, and so on and so forth. I can't tell what each of these 40 or so plants actually measured. With a stem and leaf diagram, we keep the shape of the distribution and we also keep the value of each individual item of the data set. So if we look here, we have a stem and leaf diagram and another one. What I'm going to do is spin these round. So we could look at these now as histograms round like so. So with this one, we can see now that the modal class is here. With this one, we can see the modal classes here. The advantage of these now for small amounts of values is that we retain the value of each of the observations. So if we look now at the bottom one, we've got a key on here. When we're drawing a stem and leaf diagram, it's important that we have a key. The key says 4 slash 80 means an income of $480. So we can see what the income of each of these people or countries were, whatever it is. So if I picked now a number, let's say we went for this one just here, we've got now 3 and 70, which would be $370. We can see that from the key. So if I wanted, I could now write a key for this one. So let's say now that this number right here is going to be 10. This is 13, this is 16. I could write that 1 slash 6 is equal to 16. So that now is an example of a key. So here my stem are going to be tens and the leaf now will be a unit. We must make sure that a stem and leaf diagram is in order. So with this one, if I chose this to be my key, this is 10, 13, 16. 21, 26, 27, 28, right the way up to 58. This one just here, of course, is 50. We can't have 13, 10, and then 16. I can't have 26, 28, 21, 27. It must be in order. So let's look at some stem and leaf diagrams. We're asked to draw an ordered stem and leaf diagram for each data set below, showing the key we've used. So if we look at this one, we've got 12, 7, right the way up to what looks to be 41. So if I think about this now, my smallest value is 7, my largest value is 41. I'm going to start by drawing an unordered stem and leaf diagram and then transfer that to an ordered one. You certainly don't have to do it this way. I think it's easier so you don't make mistakes. It takes slightly longer, but it just means I'm not going to uh, make mistakes. So let's think, we're starting with 7 and we're going up to 41. What I'm going to have now is my stem. And for the stem, I'm going to choose tens. For the leaf, we're going to have units. So if I'm starting at 7, that's 0 tens and 7 units. So I'm going to go right the way up now to 4. So let's go ahead and write a key. So we can write the key at the start or the beginning. I'm going to write that 1 slash 2 will be equal to 12. So what I'm going to do is just go along and just put these in the stem and leaf diagram. So if we have 12, I'm going to put the 2 here. 1 slash 2 is 12. With the 7, I'm going to put 0, 7. 0, 10 7 units. Don't cross these out as if we make a mistake. We can't go back. We're now going to put a 4 after the 2. So 1, 4 is 14. I'm now going to put a 1 just here. 2, 1 is 21. 3, 2 is going to give us 32. 1, 3, we need to put the 3 just here. We've got 9, which is 0, 9. So 0, 9 will go here. 41, so we need to put a 1 here. We've got 24, so we'll put now the 4 just here. 
We've got 21, so we would put now for 1 just here. We've got 40, and this is going to be 4, 0, so we put the 0 just here. 33, so we put the 3 here. And finally, 37. So if you want, you can check the number of data items that you've got and make sure you've put them in here. So straight away, we can see the shape of the distribution. We can see now that this is symmetric. So if we turn it around, it would make a nice histogram. So let's go ahead and put this in order. So we've got our stem and we've got our leaf. Of course, we retain 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. They're the 10s. We don't need to change the order on the first one. 7 comes before 9, so we write it like so. On the next one, I do need to change it. We've got 12, 13 and 14. Not 12, 14 and 13. 21, 21 and 24. Not 21, 24, 21. The next one looks perfectly fine, 2, 3, and 7. And then finally, I need to swap that one over. So just putting my key back on, I'm going to write now my key. 1 slash 2 is going to be equal, let's straighten that out, to be 12. I could have chosen anything. 4 slash 1 is equal to 41. I could have said now that 0 slash 9 is equal to 9. I'm just showing that these are tens and these are units. So that's done. That is an ordered stem and leaf diagram. OK, let's look at the next one. What we've got on this one now is 6.7, 3.9, uh, right the way up to 8.1. So what's the lowest value? We've got 3.5. So with this one, I'm going to have now my stem as units and my leaf now as 0 0.1, or if you like, tenths. So what I'm going to write here now is a key. So we'll write a key. And I'm going to say that 6 slash 7 is equal to 6.7. So let's look. Lowest value on here is 3.5. Highest value is 8. So I'm going to have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. It's not worth me putting on 0, 1 and 2. That's not going to aid our uh, visual representation at all. So stem and leaf. You won't always see stem and leaf written. I'm just adding it on for completeness. So 6.7, that is going to go there. 3.9, 3.9 will go just here. We've got 5. We need to be careful, that is 5.0. 7.2, the 2 can go just there. 8.1, 1 will go just here. 3.9, which is going to go just here. We've got 3.5, which is going to go just here. And we've got 6.0, which will go here. So I need to now put this as an ordered stem and leaf diagram. So if we do that, let's go ahead and put this on. We retain all of the values. We can't just here now miss out the 4. We can't write 3, 5. It's not going to look right in terms of our data set. So we'll say stem, we'll say leaf. I'll put my key on because often we forget to do these things. 6 slash 7 is equal to 6.7. So we've got 3, we've got 4, 5, we've got 6, we've got 7, and we've got 8. So I need to order this one. We've got 5, then 9, then 9. We don't have anything in here. Don't be tempted to put 0. If you do, that will give us a value of 40. Then we've got 0, 7, we've got 2, and we've got 1. So this is my ordered stem and leaf. From this, I could do lots of things. I could look to find now the modal value. We can see we've got two nines here. So the mode would be 39. Sometimes students say the mode is 9. It's not. It's 39. We could look at the median by finding the middle value. We could look at the range from taking now the 81 and subtracting 35 from it. And we could go ahead and find the mean if we wanted. Let's move on and uh, just quickly look at this one. Now, with this one, I'm not going to do it, but uh, if we look now, the lowest value looks to be on here, 7. The highest value is going to be 112. So what I'd have with my, and I'll draw a quick key, so if I just write the key for this one, what I would have is 2 slash 8 is equal to 28. So I'd have the tens column and then the units column. And this becomes quite interesting because we're going to start at naught, then we're going to have 10, 20, 30, dot, 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 right the way up now to 11. 11 is going to give us 11 tens, which is 110, and then we would have the 2 here. 
Often students go ahead and do that, uh, let's put that on, and that is wrong. We are doing now that the stem gives us tens and the leaf gives us units. So this is 11 tens, 110 plus 2. So make sure you're getting these correct. OK, let's have a, a look at some questions. Right, what's this one doing? It says on here, a stem and leaf diagram is shown below. In part A, it says, state two things wrong with a stem and leaf diagram. The first thing is that there is no key. So we've don't, we don't have a key on this one, so no key. Also, it's not ordered. So for example, now if a key was 0 slash 3 is equal to 3, then this would go 3, 7, 1. Here we would have 20, 20, 23, 27, 23, and 20. So it's no, there's no key and it's not ordered. So not ordered. So let's write this in, not in order or not ordered. So just jotting those two things. We're asked to make two corrections. I'm going to go ahead and just choose now a particular key for this and rewrite it. So we're not given a key, I'm just going to choose one. So what I'm going to do is order this and give it a key. So I'm going to say now that the key, the key I'm going to write that 1 slash 4 is going to be equal to 14. I could have had that it was 1.4. I'm just choosing these myself. So we retain the 0, the 1, the 2 and the 3. I need to order these 1, 3, 7. I've got 4, I've got 4, I've got 9. That's fine. With this one, I've got 0, 0, I've got 0, I've got now... 3, I've got 3, and I've got 7. This one is in order, 1, 5, and 7. So this is my key, and that is an ordered stem and leaf diagram. In part C, we need to write down the mode of the data set. So B, we've made the two corrections. C, we're looking for the mode. We can see we've got three zeros here. The mode is 20. Don't be tempted to write down that it's 0. It's 20. We can see that. We've got two fours, which is 14. We've got two threes, which is 23. But we have three 20s. We're now asked to find the range of the data set. This is, again, why we need this in order. If I looked now from this, it would look like the lowest value was 3 and the highest value was 37. With the ordered one, and I'm just going to make sure we don't choose this one, this is not correct especially if we're looking to find the range quickly. So we can say now the range is the highest state below us, so showing working, range is equal to 37 minus a 1, which is going to give me now 36. We need to find the median value. If we look from here, we can see now in total we have 15 numbers. So four lots of 3 and another 3. So what we're going to do is find the median. So if we do now 15 divided by 2, that gives me 7.5. So I need the 8th term. Again, if we went for the 8th term here, what we would have now, the first 6 of there, that would be the 8th term. We need to be careful and check that it's in order. Clearly, it doesn't matter with this one as we've got the same value. But there are 6 and here is the 8th one. So we can say now that the median, the middle value, is going to be 20 as well. So let's write this in. So the median is also 20. It's just worked out nice. We would have got away with it. But again, if these numbers were not the same, we would need to, we would need to make sure that we were using the ordered one. We now need to find the mean of the data set. So if we look at the mean, the mean is where we add the, all of the values up and divide by the number of values. Be careful. We've got 1 plus 3 plus 7 plus 14 plus 14 plus 19 plus now. And we're going to, uh, I mean, you could write now uh, 20, 20, 20. I'm just going to write three lots of 20 plus two lots of 23 plus 27. I'm only doing this because I'm running out of space. In fact, I'll move it. That's me being a, a little lazy because I haven't done it with the 14s. But hopefully you can see. Let's just shift that over there and we'll just extend this. So let's go ahead and just extend that and then we will divide it by the number of them that there are. So we've got now 27. We've got 31. So plus 31 plus 35 plus 37. 
divided by now divided by the 15 values that there are there are 15 in total and that would give us the mean so if you wanted to quickly do that on a calculator what's that going to give us 11 so 11 plus 28 that's what i've got just there uh, plus 19 so plus 19 plus now 60 so let's now go to the other side of that one uh, plus now for 46 so plus 46 plus 27 hopefully I'm, I'm plugging all of this in right plus 31 plus 35 plus for 37 and we will divide that now by 15 data items and that gives us now on there 19.6 now is that realistic 19.6 so uh, we write this down the mean so it's equal to 19.6. Yes, that looks pretty good. If we got something wild that was, for example, now a negative number or we got greater than 37, we could quite clearly see that that wasn't the case. So that's all we've done from here. So just check that these are right. I'm hoping I've plugged them all in right into the calculator um, to give you some idea of how to do those. OK, so that's a, a stem and leaf diagram. What we're going to do is just uh, now finish off with a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram. So, for example, now, these might be the test scores. Let's say, now, these are test scores. So, test scores for girls and boys. So, we've got some test scores. So, the test scores are out of, let's say, 70 with this. So, if I just wrote a key, let's write a key. So, what we can say now, the key will be slightly different here. What we can say now is the following. I can say on this side, I can write that, uh, let's go for, uh, let's just pick a value. Let's say now for boys, so we could say for boys, we can say now that 6, 2 is going to be equal to 26. And for girls, and this is one way of writing it, you can write this a few different ways. We can say now that 5 slash 4 is equal to 54. So that's one way of doing it. Sometimes you'll see them written as three, or sometimes you'll see them written like so. So if we look now at these particular data sets, we can compare them. So what we could say, looking at the boys, we can see by the shape of a distribution, if I turn this round here, remember now this is for the girls, so we can see that the girls were generally scoring lower marks in the 30s, so if we just look at that, Yet the boys, and just be careful with this one, remember the scale's going the other way, we can see that the boys generally are scoring high marks from 40 upwards. So by looking at this, and it's entirely up to you which way around you want to look at it, it's probably better looking at this, we can say now from here that the highest score was achieved by a boy, which is going to be 73. The lowest score, which was achieved by a boy, was going to be 7. We can see fairly um, clearly from here that the boys scored High, more um, more highly than the girls, we could say that the girls were more consistent as most would fit into this particular range from 11 to 54, whereas the spread of the data for the boys was significantly higher. So there's some basic uh, ways that we can use uh, the stem and leaf diagrams to compare different data sets. So basic introduction, we'll spend some more time looking at this um, because this might be beyond the scope of your course in later videos.